Hello world and welcome to another episode of War. Today we are going to talk about Event Bridge, Amazon new service. If you want to know more about serverless cloud computing or software engineering in general, subscribe to the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> Today is a super hot day in Helsinki, so I'm trying to record this video for you and I hope it's good, but I'm melting. So let's start by Eventbridge. Eventbridge is a service that was launched a couple of weeks ago uh, by Amazon and it's been causing a lot of news and articles and people are talking about and everybody is very excited. So I also very excited about this service so I wanted to make a video about it to introduce it to you and to get our hands on the service because there is a lot of talk about it but there's not that much uh, examples right now so I want to show you a little bit about it. So the first thing I want to cover is what is Amazon Event Bridge. So the cool thing about Event Bridge is that it's a service that allows you connecting services together. So it creates an event bus and it links different AWS services together or also external SaaS services together to AWS services. So now we don't need to use more APIs to hook these services together. They will go through this event bridge that is this kind of event bus. So basically event bridge sits in the middle between the different services and you can route messages from one service to another by creating rules in this service. So everything is very decoupled. So you create a rule and there the uh, event bridge will know where to route this message when a message arrives. So let's look at an example before what happened before event bridge. So imagine we have send desk that is a help desk uh, kind of service and it's one of the SaaS providers that is connected to Eventbridge. So before what we needed to do if there was a ticket that will uh, I don't know maybe it need our attention or it needs something specific for it that we want to put it in our in our service or maybe we want to uh, I don't know create a counter every time there is a new ticket in our backend. So what will happen is that in, in, in our service we'll need to create an API that will I don't know, increased counter, for example, for new tickets. And then in the send desk, we will need to create some kind of web hook to this API. So then now these two services are kind of coupled together, not really coupled because it's an API, it's not that highly coupled, but well, it's kind of higher coupled that if the in the newer now send desk will just send a message to the event bus and then the event bus will uh, with the rules, we'll direct it to the right Lambda. So we don't have the API anymore and we can change that Lambda anytime or we can add more rules. So when a message comes, it increases the counter and then it, I don't know, uh, put, some, put some metadata in some table. So we can do multiple things for the same message. So that's pretty cool. So this changed a little bit the way that we were uh, used to making our services because before we always need to go to this uh, webhook situation where we create an API and when an event occurs in somewhere else, then we kind of uh, trigger that API. Now that's out. We don't need it anymore thanks of uh, Eventbridge. However, there is not support for everything in Eventbridge yet. There is only like 10 plus uh, SaaS providers. You can find them in the AWS page. I will leave you the, the link for the Eventbridge product page in the description box. And I imagine that in the future there will be more and more services coming there. Also, I think like 90 plus of AWS services are available there. So you can connect AWS services to AWS services and that's pretty neat. But I think the biggest use is to connect external work to the, our AWS services. So that's something I'm very excited to see and I want to see how this works. If in the future there is some kind of marketplace that you can kind of put your I don't know, uh, your integration to Eventbridge or things like that. I'm really, really waiting to see that. I think Eventbridge will be like, an, it's a revolutionizing thing, I think. It will open the door for a lot of things. I don't know what will be there because 
everything changed so much and serverless is such a new thing they keep putting out services that make us what so i think this is one of those services that we need to be uh, paying attention what is possible to do i have seen a lot of examples on the internet of people like saying oh we can do this and that and i think that's the amazing things of putting this very uh, lego pieces component out so then the different parts of the industry and all the experts can play and build whatever they want with this lego block so i'm really excited to see what people are going to build with event bridge and in this video i want to show you something very very simple one problem that we usually have is to call a lambda from another lambda so i want to show you how you can do that with event bridge usually how i do it is using a cube so my first lambda sends a message to a queue and the second lambda will pick it up in this case what we are going to do is my first lambda will put an event into event reach and then this will be a rule that will direct the message to our second lambda i don't know if that's an efficient way to call lambdas yet i have not tested this in production i just try it out and it's super easy to build so let's go to the code so as always the first thing we want to do is to start with a new serverless framework project that we are naming event bridge serverless and there we are going to create a new project just by sls create with the template aws node.js and the name of the same folder if you don't know what i'm talking about you should check my playlist on building serverless applications 101 i leave you the link in the description box so we open this in Visual Studio Code, we clean a little bit the serverless YAML, and then we are ready to get started working in our project. So in this project, I want to create two functions, Alice and Bob. Basically, Alice will be triggering Bob. So Alice will get triggered with an API gateway, and Bob will get triggered with the event bridge. By the time I'm recording this video, there is no support for serverless framework to have an as an event a rule from the event bridge but by the time i'm recording this video they're also working in this feature so i'm pretty sure this will be ready in the next few days so go and check the serverless framework github repo to know what is in the latest version and maybe you can add the event from here but for now we cannot so now basically we just leave the event empty and we will move on to the handler.js where we are going to create the Alice handler and the Bob handler. Basically the Bob handler, what it will be doing, it's printing in the console the event that is receiving through the parameters. And that's it. We are not making Bob to do anything. And Alice will be uh, printing in the console. Well, it will be returning as an HTTP uh, response that Alice was called and then it will be calling uh, the event bridge or basically putting an event on the event bridge because this is totally event driven so Alice will be putting an event in the event bridge and this event will uh, be forwarded to a specific rule and this rule will trigger Bob that's what we want to do so it's a very simple scenario where one lambda calls another lambda so now we uh, we'll create this method put event that will be using the AWS SDK to put events in event bridge. So we are going to use the AWS SDK for this. We are going to use it. There are some examples on how to use it there in the documentation. And that's the version they recommend you to use. And we are going to use the method put event. So there you can see that you need to build as always with the AWS SDK a parameters uh, object and there we will put different entries basically one entry per, per event you want to put and the entries should have different uh, param uh, attributes so we have detail detail type event bus name resources source and time the mandatories are detail detail type and source so the detail is basically the message that you want to send over the detail type is a free form string used to decide which fields to expect in the event detail so it's to help out uh the one reading the the detail but in our case we will just put something random and the source is the source of the event that needs to uh, match in the rule so this is a very important field and then we pass that to the event bridge by putting the message so it's simple 
we will require the AWS SDK and then we are going to require the module. We will fix the version. By the time I'm recording this video, the version of the AWS SDK that is included in the Lambda is not up to date. So uh, you need to install this library in your own project. So it will be using that version because event bridge is not available in the Lambdas yet. But I imagine this step might be um, not needed in future videos. So if you're watching this in the future, maybe you don't need this. So now we will create our params object and we are going to put the detail, the source, and I forgot here to put the detail type. I will add it in a few seconds, but we will need that. The detail is basically any message. So we are just sending a message in the JSON format or in a string and the source is important and it can be anything. Then we will send the message to the event a bridge and we'll put the event and we'll promiseify it because we always promiseify all the calls to you know yes SDK so it's easier. So as I said the source can be anything it can be both this call this is now or then Alice calls Bob. Uh, one thing they recommend in the documentation is that is using this kind of uh, Java package notation that is using the dot. So just be creative or try to keep it consistent between your rules. So I will put bob.wakeup and important thing you need to do is to give permissions to this function to put an event in your event bridge. So in the serverless YAML, we need to add this role statement that allows these uh, functions to put events. So don't forget to do that. So now uh, I did a little bit modifications out of this screen because I realized there was a error, but I will show you what is the code uh, looking like. So instead of just putting the event, I'll get the data back so we can see something in the console, but that's not necessary. You can just use a wait put event. And then I added there the detail type and that's very important. So uh, I just put trigger involved, but you should put some instructions on how to read the detail. So now in the console, we will see something. But the first thing we need to do is to deploy. And after we deploy, I will create the rule and then we will see this in action. So I will speed up the deployment and then we will go to the AWS console, to the event bridge page to check what is going on. So now we are in the Amazon event bridge uh, page. This is uh, after we are logged in, we are, uh, this is the page for this service. And it shows you a lot of information about this service. And in the top, it says create rule. So we are going there and we are going to create a rule. First thing we are going to do is to create a name. We will call wake up Bob. And then we will put a description, wake up Bob by triggering the Lambda, just random description. We have two ways to define this uh, rule. We can have a event because somebody triggers, send this event here and uh, we will trigger the Lambda or then we can schedule every 10 minutes, do something. So in this case, we are going to use the event pattern and we will go and use the custom pattern. But if we get, take a look to the predefined ones, we will see that we have AWS and service partners. If we go to service partners there, we can see all the different partners that are already in the system. And I imagine in the future they will add more. So this is something that will change. And then if we go to AWS, we can see all the services from AWS that can trigger uh, these rules. So this is really cool. But for now we are going to use a custom pattern and it's super simple. We just need to define this source and it to be exactly the same as the one in the message. So basically when a message uh, with the source uh, Bob wake up arrives to the event reach, then it will trigger this rule. It's as simple as that. And then you can select the bus. We will use the event bus by default. And then we will trigger the Lambda. We need to select what is the target. And in this case is to trigger Lambda, but there are many different targets and things that you can do and we pick the function that we just deployed. And that's it. We create this and voila, we have a rule. And I wake up, Bob is there and we can see uh, the metrics if we want later on. So now I will put these two logs side by side, the logs for Alice and the side logs for Bob. They're both tailing. So I will go and trigger Alice and we can see what happens. So I'll trigger Alice 
and now Alice is being called, we have this uh, message that when something is put, it sends us this event ID, and then we can see at the same time Bob has been triggered, and there we can start seeing some messages coming in. Now Alice has completed, and Bob's still doing something, um, and now we can see that it's received the message that we have seen, the detail is the same as the message message, so that's really good. So now we trigger a lambda from another lambda using the event bridge. You can find this code in GitHub as always. The link is in the description box. That was the video for today, I hope you like it, if you did give a big thumbs up. Don't forget that in the description you can find all the links for event bridge. If you want to continue watching around here there are other videos from my channel so go ahead and click and if not I see you next Tuesday with another episode of Fubak. Ciao ciao!